What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review. This time we're checking out The Sixth Sense, written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Bruce Willis. Now, Sixth Sense is probably M. Night Shyamalan's most famous movie. Now, I am not the big M. Night Shyamalan fan. I was never much of a fan of this man's work. To be honest with you, I like maybe five movies out of his entire filmography, and that is the Unbreakable trilogy, which is Unbreakable, Split, and Glass. Even though Glass is very divided amongst people, and I, myself included, I overall did like the movie. And uh, <clears throat> I also enjoyed... Uh, that's it. Four. I'm sorry. I like only four movies from this guy, because The Sixth Sense is the fourth movie. So, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of M. Night Shyamalan as a director. His movies never really meant anything to me. Uh, I always thought he was a very just a very pretentious director and a very overrated director. And I think his movies they just they just never resonated. <clears throat> but I will say this: I do like the Sixth Sense. I think the Sixth the Sixth Sense is a really good psychological thriller with some good horror elements. I think it has a very you know very simple story. There's this little boy who has a who is pretty who can see dead people and he has this child psychiatrist played by Bruce Willis who pretty much tries to help him <clears throat> and eventually try to un understand this gift which can be which is a curse because a lot of the ghosts in this movie they pretty much scar this young boy to the point where he's like afraid to tell his secret to his mother played by Tony Collette so the basic premise of the movie is actually really good and the movie itself it's overall solid. I think Bruce Willis as Malcolm Crowe, this is a very dialed down Bruce Willis performance. Um, of all the action heroes, which are like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis to me was always the better actor of the three. Mainly because Bruce Willis did appeared and did acting roles before, like real movies. And in a movie like this, you know, th now this movie came out post his, like when his career was already in full gear. This is like 1999. Prior to this movie, all everyone knows Bruce Willis to do is, the, is action movies. So to see him in a movie like this where he's playing a more down-to-earth type of you know character, it's against the type, it's against the norm. And Bruce Willis, he holds down the role perfectly. I thought he was really, really good as Dr. Malcolm Crowe. And I actually like the chemistry that he has with Haley Joel Osment. Uh, I think they, they kind of sort of develop a father-son-like bond and I really do enjoy the scenes with them. And, and to me, the movie's strongest points are when Cole and Dr. Malcolm are on screen together. Because they, they, those scenes, they hold my attention. And these scenes pepper throughout where, where uh, Cole is encountering the ghost. Those scenes are good. A lot of the other movie, it's okay. It's nothing really all that spectacular. Um, I do like the stuff with the mom. But... But the, Cole's mom, but ma, the mom and Cole, they have scenes together that to me are just written very awkwardly. And it's like two adults having a conversation instead of a mother talking to her child. I don't know, it always seemed, it se it always seemed kind of off to me for some reason. I, I, just, I don't get why, I don't know. I think a, a lot of that has to do with just M. Night Shyamalan not knowing how to write um, uh, parents and kids. And he just writes them as them having this intellectual conversation. Uh, and it comes across as just very unrealistic and very awkward. Uh, now, this movie, of course, is known for its infamous twist, which is that Bruce Willis was a ghost all throughout the entire movie. And I like how they plant seeds here and there about about that could happening, especially when we when, when you first see the prologue of the movie where he gets shot by um, a former patient of his. Now we're led to believe that he survived the, that he survived getting shot. But in so doing so, he his marriage is now on ice, and his wife is very cold with him. So at first, we're just thinking, wow, what's wrong with this woman? And then as the movie progresses, and we find out the actual truth, now it all makes sense. So I like how that was handled. I think the payoff was, uh, was good for what it was. It didn't bother me at all. I thought it was okay. Uh, now, again, that stuff is, that stuff is fine. Uh, negatives? There are certain scenes in this movie that, to me, they're just kind of unrealistic and just kind of like, kind of hammy. <clears throat> For example, there's this one scene where Cole is in school 
and he's talking to a teacher and the teacher just reacts very nasty with this, with with Cole calling him a freak and stuff like that like I, I don't know I don't know I don't really buy that cuz in my experience in going to school I've never had a teacher ever lose control like that no matter how annoyed they would get so I I question the validity of that like I un I understand what they're going with the scene with Cole having a ghost talk to him and telling him secrets about the teacher himself but I just think that scene was very awkwardly and jankily directed. And I think the acting by the teacher itself was, a little, was kind of a little hammy. Uh, speaking of which, the acting in this movie is rock solid. But though there they are really instances where it comes across as flat in some areas. Particularly with uh, the Bruce Willis' wife character. She comes across as flat. Uh, Tony Collette, I think her performance is fine, but like I said, there are certain moments where her and Cole have very awkward scenes together. But I overall do like the relationship between the two, and she does come across as a caring mother for her son and not knowing what's going on with her son's mental state of mind. Uh, the movie does not explain how Malcolm comes across Cole. They don't. Under they don't explain how. <laughs> they don't explain any of that stuff. Or if they did, I missed it. So that's something that uh, I like okay so how did Malcolm come across cold not only that can the mother see Malcolm or does the mother not see Malcolm you know but you know the movie th th throws out hints and clues but it tries to disguise it but the scenes look kind of awkward because of the twist that's going on so it's like whenever the Mal mom and Malcolm because whenever something happens to Cole Malcolm just so happens to be there even though he was nowhere in the previous scene so like I want to know how he's able to find these things out I that never really I never really found I never really understood that part of the movie. But I think overall I think overall the movie again the movie is solid for what it is and when Shyamalan does go for his scares, he does a good job at doing it. Like it's a very a slow burn. So he builds up his suspense and when you do get those scares and you do get the images of the uh, the dead people, they are kind of they come across as real shocking. I mean, you, of course, you get the stereotypical horror sound boom jump scare so noise, which is annoying as all hell. But I think Shyamalan, to his credit, he does make it legitimately, I wouldn't say scary, but intense. And that's what this movie does have. It does have this very intense atmosphere to it in a lot of areas. Particularly this one scene where Cole's hiding under a tent and this uh, dead girl goes into the tent, starts vomiting all over the place. And Haley Joel Osment's performance in that scene is really chilling because you can just because you, you, he's really selling the fact that he's scared out of his mind seeing what he's seeing. So I think that stuff is all well handled. Um, I think the cinematography in this movie, this is a good looking movie. It's shot really well. It's done by Tak Fujimoto, who did Silence of the Lambs. So the cinematography, this is a great looking movie. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's camera work and visual style, it looks really, really good. His camera movements have a very good fluid camera motion to it, though there are certain camera tricks he does that are kind of like weird in a way. But overall, I think the camera work is fine. And I do like the score also by James Newton Howard, so there. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts on Sixth Sense. I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I enjoy this movie. I like it a lot. And after seeing it for a third time, I can honestly say that it is a quality movie and it deserves all the recognition that it's gotten in the last 21 years. And I would say that it's one of Brett, Bruce Willis's, it really is probably one of Bruce Willis's most solid and best performance in a non-genre film. Particularly without the action genre, which is what he's best known for. Alright. So yeah, those are my thoughts on The Sixth Sense. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.